Hello, got a question for you. Who's ready for some definite integration? Oh, did I hear you say definitely? Well, that's good. We're looking at definite integrals packet page nine to start with some of these examples. An extra joke for you this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whatever the time may be. What do sea monsters eat as a snack? Well, they eat a lot of things, but they really like fish and ships as a snack. Um, I'm looking at the warm up at the top here, and today we're going to be um, delving more into the idea behind a definite integral, which the common theme has been its area under a curve, area between a curve and the x axis. Check out the info that you're given in this mystery graph. So, no, we're not given an equation for it. We can't just integrate by taking an antiderivative, but we do have little hints about what some of these pieces of area are going to come out to be. It says the shaded region A has an area of 1.5. That means this shaded region has an area of 1.5 square units. It is below the x-axis, so we know that when the area is below the x-axis, we have to count it as negative area. So negative 1.5 is the area of A. Um, what about, so we don't know B, we're gonna find that in a second, but we do know that the entire definite integral from zero all the way to six is gonna be 3.5. That's your net area. I'm gonna put that here, net area all the way from zero to six is 3.5 from there to there. That should be the missing link to find this region here. I feel like let's do that first before we start answering the questions. We gotta figure out negative 1.5 plus what value, we gotta find B, is gonna equal a net area of 3.5. And that's pretty simple enough to add the 1.5 over and get that B is gonna be positive five units. If we add these two values, you get your net area of 3.5. I think that's all we needed. Let's look at A. What's the integral from zero to two of f of x? Well, we talked about that first. Negative 1.5 would be the definite integral because we see that area being below the x-axis. How about B? Integral from two to six. Two to six, well, speaking of B, that should be what capital B is. The area from two to six is gonna be five units. Check out C and D, something different in both of these. C has absolute value signs around the f of x. What that means is we're talking, consider all area positive, total area versus net area. I'll put total area above it. And that just means instead of counting this negative, take the absolute value of negative 1.5. So 1.5 plus 5 gives you a total area of 6.5 square units. And then lastly, don't get thrown off if you see a constant out in front of your function value because you can just apply this to your answer. If you know the integral from zero to two is this value negative 1.5 that we got in part A, we can just multiply that by the constant negative two and then get an answer for part D of just three. Okay, so you'll see a little bit more of this today. Every question is centered around a definite integral, but I'm switching up the way I'm asking you the questions, just trying to get our feet wet with ways that we can speak of definite integrals and use them to solve problems. I really like one and two. I think if I had to pick a favorite on today's lesson, one would be it. That's gonna get a smiley face because these are some things we know how to graph and I'm wondering if we can use integration to come to an answer for this definite integral. Now notice, the word integrate isn't mentioned here, antiderivative is not mentioned, and um, all it says is the area of the region bounded by. We got to think that an integral could help us find the area of the region from x equals 1 to x equals e. Let's get a picture of this first. Let's graph y equals 1 over x. What do you know about that graph, right? It's a hyperbola. It's that parent graph shape has two hyperbola branches over in quadrant three and up in quadrant one. What do I care about most here? Just the interval from one to E. I wanna focus my attention on the quadrant one portion of this graph. Plot a few easy points. If I plug in one for X, I get one back for Y. I have a dot at one, one. If I plug in two for X, I get a half, right? You're down at two comma a half, three comma a third. I notice there's going to be an asymptote right on the axis. If I go this way and plug in a half, I'm up at two. So rough sketch of a curve is gonna look like that. Now let's bound this. Really the sketch is just for us. It's just to help us see what this area is even gonna look like before we try to start solving. We wanna go from X equals one, I'll just draw a vertical segment there, all the way to x equals e, do you remember where that goes? 2.71828, right? It's right between two and three. I'll just estimate e to be about there. 
I'm going to shade the region now. So the region in question that we're trying to find area for is this shaded region from 1 to E. So it's just nice before you even start integrating to just get an idea of what the shape of the region is. All right, so let's find area. Well, definite integral means area under a curve. So we're integrating from what to what? From 1 to E. It's given in the problem. What are we integrating? The function 1 over x. And we're taking that integral with respect to x. You have that little notation at the end put there too. All right, now we're back in our wheelhouse. Definite integrals, right? It's like we never left. Integral of 1 over x, right? A function whose derivative is 1 over x is your natural log. That one has its own special rule. We want to take this natural log, now that we've integrated, no plus c necessary, this is a definite integral, we want to evaluate it from 1 to e. So do this like we did in the previous couple lessons, right? Plug in the top number first, ln of e, and you want to subtract what you get when you plug in the lower limit of integration, minus ln of 1. And another reason this problem got a smiley face is, yeah, natural log is kind of a crazy transcendental function, but we don't need a calculator for this. Do you remember the ln of e? The log base e of e? Check it with a calculator. It's going to be 1. e to the first power is e. Minus, now I'm stretching you thin, do you know the natural log of 1? e to what power would give you 1? And a calculator would confirm you get 0 for that next part. I don't know why. I just really like this question. For as crazy as it looked in the beginning, and as weird of a shape as that area is, you have exactly one square unit of area that's bounded between 1 and e on that curve. All right, let's look at 2. 2 says you have um, a third degree function here. This is a cubic. It's going to be an S curve. You're bounding it by this curve, the x-axis, and the vertical lines, x equals 0 and x equals 2. Feel free to grab a handy-dandy calculator and use it to just make the sketching of the original function go quicker. I'm going to have an S-curve shape. I know that the um, y-intercept, if I plug in 0 for x, is going to be up at 2 over 4. It's going to be up at a half. And I get roughly, this is not my best sketch, but I get roughly this S-curve here. Okay. And then to get an idea of where the, um, the desired region falls, we want to go from 0 to 2. So I should actually, here's one, uh, 0 to 2. I'll just draw a line here at 2. We already kind of have a line with the y-axis at 0. And in red, I'm going to shade the desired region. Right? It's going to be this whole thing. Would you believe that this would also come out to be a whole number? I hate to give it away now, but check this out. So we want to find the area from what to what. We'll check the problem because the picture and the problem gave it to us. We want the area from this x value to that x value, lower one on the bottom. So 0 to 2 of the fraction x cubed plus 2 over 4 and then um, taken with respect to x. You have ways you can deal with this fraction. This fraction is not going to require any fancy rules or use substitution because there's just a little harmless constant on the bottom. So feel free to split this up into two parts, divide both parts by four, or if you want, rewrite this. Extract out the constant, make it one-fourth of something that's going to be very quick to integrate, x to the third plus two taken with respect to x. You can always just leave a constant in your answer. I'm going to leave the 1 fourth put, so I'll just leave the 1 fourth. And in parentheses, I want to integrate x cubed plus 2. So let's go up a power. x to the fourth over 4 plus 2x. And this gets evaluated from 0 to 2. The 1 fourth could come in now. The 1 fourth could stay out. It does not matter. This is going to be 1 fourth. I'll just leave it completely outside. Let's plug in 2 first. So 2 to the 4th over 4, 2 to the 4th is 16 over 4, plus 2 times 2, right, plus 4. We want to subtract what we get when we plug in 0, but that's kind of boring. It's just 0 and another 0. Not much left. So this is cool how, let me move myself out of the way here. This is cool how you can have 1 fourth of 16 over 4, so 4 plus another 4, 2 times 2, minus just 0, 8 quarters gives you exactly the whole number, two square units of area. And although I admitted my picture is not the best, not the best I've ever done, it does look feasible that that could be about two square units of area. So that's nice. Okay, let's check out the next page. I really like these problems. Three is unlike something we've seen before. You have some kind of zigzag here. And actually, we kind of have seen this before. I spoke a little bit too soon. Because if you're shading the area under the curve here, you can um, use very easy 
area formulas that are found in geometry by saying, I want the integral, this says from one to seven. So I'm gonna draw a vertical line down at one in number three and a vertical line down at seven. And I want all this shaded region from the zigzag down to the x-axis. Well, do yourself a favor, since we're pretty comfortable getting areas of what, rectangles, triangles, trapezoids, can we split this crazy shape up into rectangles, triangles, and trapezoids? Absolutely. I see a triangle here, and I see another skinnier triangle right next to it. Does that look okay? Um, and so I'll just section this off as well. Um, do that. And then what I'll start to do next is I want to start filling in areas of these easier to find shapes. Let's see if it's going to let me section that off and right on top of what I already wrote. So I'm talking about those two triangles and then the rectangle that's underneath. Let me just draw arrows from the outside. So this big long rectangle is going to have an area of length times height. So it'll be six times one. The rectangle, yikes, the rectangle is going to have an area of six. Okay, how about this little triangle here? One half base times height. So one half base is two, and the height of it is, I think, one unit. So this has an area of one, and all this is above the x-axis, so six and one. How about the last skinny or triangle? One half base times height, so one half times one, the base, times two, the height of it. So again, you have an area of one, half of two. If I add these three up, I do have my answer to part A, one plus one plus six. Just using geometry, right? We didn't need any equations there. You get eight square units. B is a good question, and there's no reason B has to require doing another sketch or take us a bunch of work. You just have to be able to picture it in your head. It says determine the answer to part A, the definite integral from one to seven, if the whole graph is picked up and shifted two units up. So imagine that happening. Imagine this sh whole shape shifting up two units. What are you adding to the already existing area under the curve of eight? Well, you're adding two more of these big rectangles, right? You're adding another rectangle that has length six still, but height two. So if you add a two times six, and you can confirm this with a drawing, you get eight plus 12, you're gonna have 20 square units of area in this new situation. Um, a couple other good ones. You have a piecewise function next. Might as well give it a try. And then the one I wanted to end with was the one at the bottom of the page. So check out number four. Let's see if we can sketch it first. It says evaluate the integral from zero to five of this piecewise function. It's been a minute since we've graphed something like this. So let's start with the line. Y equals negative 2x plus 7. Um, has a y-intercept at 7. The slope is going to be negative 2, down 2 over 1. And I want to make sure I stop with a closed dot when I get to x equals three. So roughly, wow, that actually wasn't so bad. I was more nervous about that one. You get this line. How about graphing just y equals four when x is greater than three? Go up to four, greater than, not equal to, we'll have an open dot and then it'll go from there. So here is your piecewise function. It is a function because it passes the vertical line test. Always good to know. And I want to section it off. I want to find the integral from 0 to 5. So it's this whole area from 0 to 3. And then we want to go all the way and cut ourselves off at 5. So you're also including this rectangle. This should be pretty um, feasible if you split it up into a trapezoid and then a rectangle. Let's do the trapezoid first. So trapezoid. One easy way a teacher taught me how to remember area of a trapezoid is that you average the two bases, base one plus base two over two times height. And you might notice that this trapezoid is on its side so that the easiest way to think about it is the height of it is three and the two bases are one unit and seven units. So you have one plus seven over two times the height, because this is sideways, of three units. That should just con that should cover you for area from zero to three. Even easier is gonna be the area of the rectangle. Right, the rectangle has area length times width, area equals length times width. So we can add just, uh, what is it, two times four. So plus two times four to get your adding eight. So this is gonna be 12 plus eight. And coincidentally, the same answer we got for the very last question, 20 square units of area. So one kind of quick way to use geometry to get it. Um, we're gonna end things with these examples on the bottom, so stay tuned for some more. And until then, talk to you soon.